Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical and episode 5 of the Dream Rifle build series. We've got a bunch of new parts in. These are not all of them. We've got really exciting stuff. And uh, this build is coming along really well. So, you might remember this is where we left off last week. ADM UIC Ambi Lower, Voltor MUR Upper Receiver, we got the B5 Systems Furniture, Geisley SDE Trigger, Radian Talon Ambidextrous Safety, we got the green EOTech, we got the green EPC from Forward Controls, the Geisley Buffer System. This thing is being built with really nice parts and it's only gonna get better. Today is the most exciting episode of the series yet, in my opinion, so make sure you're subscribed and uh, I'll show you where we're going from here. So the next logical steps in the process, obviously are gonna be a bolt carrier group. We got that from BCM. Radian Raptor charging handle, because I put these in every one of my builds. This one, of course, in OD green to match the rest of the rifle. I told you guys last week I was gonna get the new castle nut from forward controls. Not that I really needed it. The one that came with the Geisley buffer system is perfectly adequate. I just thought this one looked nicer. It's made out of billet steel, so we're gonna use it. And this, this is what I'm most excited about. The Geisley handguard. This is gonna be sweet. So we're gonna unbox all this, put it all together. I also, so this is one thing, when you get a Geisley handguard, it doesn't come with a barrel nut wrench like some brands do. So you have to purchase a barrel nut wrench for it. So this is from, I got this from Primary Arms. Needed a Geisley barrel nut wrench. So we get that as well today. But uh, let's go up close, install all this stuff and see where we are from there. So here we have our build so far. I think that it's looking really good so far but it's going to be looking a lot better by the time this video is done so let's move this out of the way first thing here is from bcm bravo company manufacturing and this is my bolt carrier group now this is in flat dark earth or what BCM calls their ion bonded tan, I believe. And uh, for some reason, I've just always wanted this bolt carrier group. And even though this build is mostly OD green and black, I still think that this is gonna look pretty sweet. It does come with an extra O-ring for your instructor, extractor, excuse me. So that is a good thing to hold on to. Other than that, we're gonna get all this trash out of the way. We've got a charging handle from Radian Weapon Systems. This is their standard Raptor charging handle, which I absolutely love. I put them on every one of my ARs. This one in OD green, obviously, to uh, go with the color scheme of the entire build. I just, you know, these are ambidextrous. They work great. They're easy to get a hold of. I love them. We've got the forward controls castle nut in OD green with the dimples. That's literally, I just got that to be Gucci. And then we've got the creme de la creme, the piece de resistance. This is the Geisley Mark 8 handguard in OD green. And this thing is absolutely gorgeous. This is definitely the nicest handguard that I have ever purchased. But that goes with most of the parts on this build. I mean, this, this build is turning out to be much nicer than any of my previous builds. So it comes with obviously your Allen keys for the screws here and also for these ones here. I'll explain what all that does in a minute. Full set of instructions on installation and everything else here. Got more Geisley stickers. And our packing list. So, and get rid of the rest of this garbage here. Toss it all aside, and uh, we're gonna put this together. The first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take this bolt carrier group apart. 
I'm going to clean it all, lube it up, and then put it back together before it goes in the rifle because I can't stand that scratchy bolt care, you know, sound when you're pulling the charging handle back. It drives me crazy when people don't lube their guns because your gun can be very smooth if you take care of it correctly. But if you don't, it'll be gross. So let's do that. Now again, I've said this many times, but as YouTube won't allow us to show building on their platform, through the magic of video editing, and we're back. So, this uh, few things that really impressed me, or at least left an impression on me, <laughs> While I was cleaning this bolt care group, it was actually relatively dirty for something that's brand new, which leads me to believe that it was test fired, which is a good thing. It's also high pressure tested, magnetic particle inspected, it has the uh, MPHPI or HPMPI stamped on the bolt itself. Um, BCM is known for very reliable rifles. So I figured a BCM bolt carry group was a good idea. Radiant Raptor charging handle, which you guys know that I love. And uh, yeah, we're already feeling pretty smooth. I definitely cleaned everything well, lubed it up good. And then the Geisley Mark 8 handguard and OD Green. This handguard is very nice. So it's got M-Lock at the 3, 6, and 9, but also on these top angles here. Uh, so that gives you options for running lights and pressure pads, things like that. Obviously, Picatinny across the top with uh, lightning cuts in it. Um, it's got a very, very solid lockup system, including anti-rotation tabs that you can tighten these set screws down on. So your handguard will not move at all. So if you're running like a laser aiming device or something that needs to hold zero on it, uh, you shouldn't have to worry about that. It also has steel inserts in the QD points for your sling swivels. That is very important because steel sling swivels will eventually wear out aluminum holes. I have other handguards from Aero Precision that have, you know, QD sockets, but they're just aluminum. These uh, steel inserts will just make that last a lot longer. Plus, it just looks good. I mean, God, everything on this rifle is coming together really, really well. Another thing that we can do now, because uh, because I have a bolt carrier group in here, we can actually see what this trigger does now that it's got a firing pin to uh, come down on. So you can see the first stage take up there very light. And that is the break. It is extremely crisp. Reset, break. Let's see what it pulls at here. Got my trusty trigger pull gauge here. And let's see where we're at with this trigger. Two point six pounds. We'll do one more just for good measure. Two point four pounds. That uh that works for me. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. And I'm very happy with everything so far in this build. It's looking fantastic. As you can see, it is finally starting to look like a real rifle. And uh, that makes me very excited. Bolt locks back like it should. I'm not going to drop it hard because I don't have a barrel extension in there for it to uh, come into contact with. And so... All of that resistance would just be hitting my um, buffer retainer pin. I don't want to damage that, so I'm going to be a little bit careful with it until I get a barrel. But uh, yeah, that trigger, oh my gosh. Take it. <laughs> Reset. Break. That is just crisp. I love it. Love everything about this build so far. It is coming together really really well i uh when i ordered the bolt carrier group in tan knowing that everything else was flat dark earth i kind of wondered how that was gonna just gonna go with the overall aesthetic but i think it looks fantastic bcm fcd eotech and geisley 
all right in this one little area here. ADM receiver, Volter upper receiver. This thing is just looking really good. I don't know if you guys could tell, I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are as well. Uh, this has been a really fun build. My favorite build series so far. I hope it has been for you guys as well. Um, now I gotta decide on a barrel and a muzzle device. Uh, this is a 13 and a half inch Mark 8 handguard. So I believe I need to go with a 14 and a half inch barrel to have enough room to mount a suppressor, um, which I do plan on running this suppressed eventually. So if I'm gonna have to pin and weld a muzzle device, that means that I want to pin and weld something that is, it's gonna be permanent. So I gotta make the right decision. Um, and so I haven't chosen a barrel or a muzzle device yet, but those are obviously the next decisions that I have to make for this build. So hopefully I will have figured that out and gotten those in by next week so I could do another episode. But uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think so far of the parts that I've chosen. And like I've asked every week, let me know down in the comments what parts you would choose for your dream rifle build. Uh, this has been a really fun build for me. Uh, please like if you like this, share it if you know people that are into building rifles. And uh, from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.